Hello, hello, hello. We are back again with another amazing episode with another amazing guest. We have a two-time Olympian in the 200 and the fourth fastest woman in the world in the 200 also, Ms. Jenna Prandini. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. And I'm swell. I'm excited to talk to you, especially like in an interview type of way. Cause we never talked like this before mm -hmm. so let's get into it we never so all right it. <laughs> it's official it's official now okay 2016 you qualified for the olympics mm -hmm. i did a lot of research it was a 2253 and you got third can you just talk about like that difference from 2016 olympic trials to now um yeah i think it's hard to compare times just because like you know how it is at a track meet. Um, there's different factors from the weather to the wind to like, there's so many other things that could contribute to times. So like altogether, the races weren't um, as fast as they were this year. So, I mean, the ultimate goal at a championship race is to get top three. And at the end of the day, like, I don't care about the time as long as I uh, see my name, like top three and making the team for the Olympics. As it should be. That's the only thing that matters. Now, from 2016 mm -hmm. to 2000 and supposed to be 2020, but ended up being 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was going on with you? And because, like, so when I looked at your stats, it was like a fluctuation mm -hmm. with your 200 meter times. It was like we're going to 22.5, and then we're going right back down to 22.1, right back up to 22.5, right back down to 21.8. So, what was going on in the in between? I mean, the common denominator is injuries. Um, when I'm running and I'm healthy, um, I'm running fast and I know I can run fast and compete with anyone in the world. Um, but it's been a struggle, it's been a battle since 2016. Um, I've had a lot of injuries. I've had a lot of broken feet, both sides, um, and a broken shoulder randomly. So. Uh, yeah, it's just been a fight to stay healthy. And when I'm healthy, I run well. And um, if I'm injured, like, there's nothing I can do about that. You broke your shoulder? When did you break your shoulder? It was, like, the year I moved here. You don't remember this? The year I moved here, um, literally the second week, it was a freak accident in the weight room. And I, like, fell down really hard and landed really awkwardly, I guess, with weight on my back and just fractured my shoulder. So I was Where running was around I? the track like it was like <laughs> literally it was after pra it was after a weight session, um and I was doing like some ankle mobility foot mobility, trying to like get keep my feet healthy, get my foot right, and the box flip from under my feet and the weight on my back like just crushed me and I think I just fell wrong or jerked forward wrong and then uh yeah fractured my shoulder now when you were dealing with those injuries did you ever look at it like it was a sign like okay it's my time to just hang up the spikes um no um I think every time I've been injured um I've had a lot of emotions but I never was ever like, okay, I want to give up. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, this is just too much. Um, it was more of like, I was just frustrated. I was angry. I would be sad. Um, you know, twice it happened. I was at the U.S. Champs um, in 2017 and 19. My foot was broken at both of those. So it was more of just like, it happened again. Um, but I've never wanted to give up ever. Um, I still have like the passion and, and all that for it. It was just more of like, I was just so frustrated and angry because I knew if I was healthy, I would be able to run fast and perform well, but it was just like my foot would not allow it, would not allow me to run. So the fact that you were going to these meets with like a broken foot and you were still mm -hmm. dropping like some hot times is more than I could say anybody has ever really done. Now, how has your health been this year in like your training I see obviously you've been running great so your health has been great what have you done differently to make sure that it stayed like that um I think for me I finally found um 
I guess a doctor that I can trust. Like, uh, you know, more than anyone, like you'll be after practice, you'll be like, where are you going? I'll be like, I'm going to Dr. Noah's office to get treatment. Um, and it's just been staying on top of it, like get myself healthy and then making sure that I'm doing everything in my power to stay healthy. Um, whether I feel good, whether I feel bad, I'm going to go get treatment because I don't want anything to flare up. And so it's just making sure I stay on top of that and make sure that I'm communicating with Coach Flo, like, hey, my foot's a little bit sore today. Um, and he'll be like, all right, let's back off and get on the bike um, and just take it day by day. And that's something I've really seen firsthand. As soon as practice is over, it's like, where are you going, Dr. Noah? That's where that's where Jenna is, everyone, for four hours of the day. She's like, I'm with Dr. <laughs> Noah. Oh, man, Dr. Noah's office. That's just an everyday thing for you. So right. more kudos to you. But fast forward, mm -hmm. 2021, let's talk about these trials. Compared to 2016, like you said, I know, you know, conditions change. And circumstances right. are always different. But how did the intensity mm -hmm. feel being on the line? You PR'd every single round. So how right. were you feeling? Um, I just went into these trials, like, ready to go. I think the opportunity has been taken away from me so many times from injury that there's just, like, a fire inside of me like I'm ready to do this like finally I'm here finally I'm healthy and I knew that my fitness was there coach Flo was telling me like you're ready to run fast um and it was just like take advantage of the opportunity because finally like you're able to run pain free and um yeah I was just ready to go and you were running pain free you also had the 100 meter rounds and you ran really fast mm -hmm. and you had a season's best of 11-11 just missed the team, but now you're on the team. So that's great. Did that feel like momentum for you moving into the 200? Like I just ran my season's best in the 100. If you do the calculations, this 200 should end up being something crazy too. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like as a, me as a track athlete going through high school, going through college, like I've loved doing multiple events. I've loved doing rounds. Like that's just something that feels like natural to me. So to be able to go and compete in the 100 and get through those rounds um, just helps set up the 200 for me. Um, and honestly, I didn't execute the 100. Like, you know, Flo, he, he doesn't, I didn't run what he wanted me to run or what he knows I can run. So there's so much room for improvement on that. But after getting through there and placing fourth, um, that just lit even more fire in me. Like, all right, like I'm going to go to the two and I'm going to get the job done. You literally, you did what needed to be done. And I already know that Coach Flo was not going to be satisfied. <laughs> he was probably like, right, no, he, he, get out the blocks hard right. enough or whatever else. Mm, right. That's And that's what makes him great is he's never satisfied. And he always can find all these little things that you can improve upon and, and grow from. So I'm just, that's what we've been working on in practice. Right. But what made you decide to do both this time? Because you didn't do both in 2016. Right. Well, 2016, I didn't qualify in both. Um, I think if if I would have had the opportunity to run the 100 in 2016, I would have done both. Um, and when I found out when they called and asked if I would do both, um, it was kind of just like, why not? Why not take the opportunity? Um, I'm healthy. I feel good. I know I can run fast. Um, uh, it's the Olympic Games. Like, why would I not want to go out there and compete against the best in the world? And now you made it in both. That's crazy. You trusted yourself. Right. Like, yeah, these injuries have held me back. COVID took over at some mm -hmm. point. I broke my shoulder. Like, all these things have just been happening. I had a coaching switch. Right. But now it's like you're just the new and improved Jenna Prandini. How has it been training with Kenny Harrison. She's your best friend, your next door neighbor, connecting backyards, all of the in-betweens. How has it been training with her and having her as a training partner? Um, I mean, it's it's like the most ideal setup you could ask for. Like you said, we were best friends, next door neighbors. So we live the exact same lifestyle. So we go to practice, like we know, we know what each other is going through. Um, you know, we eat dinner together every night. It just like, it just makes everything so much easier. And I feel like 
having a training partner like that and having someone who's going through everything with you, having the same aspirations, the same goals as you is, is really helpful and it helps get you through times like it helps me get through like injuries. It helps me get through if I'm frustrated at practice or have anything that I ever want to talk about. Like there's always someone right there that I can talk to talk to and like she knows exactly what I'm going through. Um, and you know, you never really have to hold back because you, you can tell your friends whatever you need to. <laughs> right. And Kenny has definitely been there for you, well, especially with everything that's been going on. You moving up from fourth place into third, which is a great opportunity for you. And I know that you're extremely excited to represent Team USA in the 100 and just be further into the relay pool than you were before. Right. And also the no spectators at Tokyo and just like everything else, everything else that has just been seeming, you know, like y'all are really not, everything's not really working out. That's what it seems like. How are you planning right. to remain focused anyway? Um, I think going back to college, my coach, I remember going into championships when I started to run well, he sat me down and he was like, whatever you do, like, do not go on to the internet and start reading all the stuff about what's going on in the track and field world or anything like that. Um, just stay focused on the task and what you want to do. Um, I think that that's, held true throughout my whole career, um, especially now, um, is just remain focused on the things that I can control. And that's just going to practice, um, listening to Coach Flo now, um, knowing that he's going to do everything in his power to prepare me as best as possible to compete at the highest level I can when I get to Tokyo and just kind of block out everything else that doesn't need, like, to be focused on like I can't control what's going on in Tokyo or, or the fans in the stands or not like that's out of my control the only thing that I control is to show up to the line as ready as I possibly can be um, and just remain focused on that that has been the statement that I've gotten from all of the other athletes the professional athletes I've interviewed it's just these are things that you can't control and I feel like that is right. the perfect professional athlete answer like you know we can't control these things but oh well like we're still at the olympics right. whether they're spectators or not and you guys mm -hmm. continuously remaining positive about everything i feel like is going to help you guys get through you know because y'all are going to be in tokyo for a long time it's just going to help you guys get right. through everything and also just mm -hmm. blocking out everything else that's been going on now what right. event besides your two Probably, okay, you're three. Which event are you most excited to watch in Tokyo? Oh, man, gosh. this The exciting thing is, is, like, honestly, every single event that's going to go on is, is going to be insane to watch. But I think the hurdle races are going to be crazy, whether it's men or women, whether it's the short hurdle. Like, the 100 hurdles, the 400 hurdles, like, I think... Uh, we have the world record holder for both the 400 and the 100 hurdles for the women. And then the men's side, like, they're, like, this close to having the world record. So I think I'm most excited to watch the hurdles. Um, helps that Kenny's in them. But I don't know. All around, it's going to be a, a crazy meet. It is going to be crazy, especially with these relays. I have also been just, the comments have been going crazy about the relays. Like, who are they going right. to put on it? What's going to happen? I know you don't want to comment on the women's one, but what about for the men's? How do you think that that's looking? What's the lineup for you? Like, th this, this should lineup. be controversial, but like, what's the lineup for you? Like, who do you think is going to be your expertise? I mean, to be honest, the, the thing that makes it even more like, or different from any other year is that like, usually we go to relay camp and you can kind of see like where the coach's head is at of like who they might want to run each leg and like the people that they're thinking are like alternates or could, they could switch in and out. Um, so really like I have no idea where their head's at. And I mean, the good thing is, is there's so much talent and there's so much depth in the men and the women, like whoever they pick, it's going to be a great team. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, 
Trayvon. Nobody knows. Be on it. Nobody knows. Right. Trayvon, Ronnie. Like, I don't know. Like, I really don't know who, who will be on the relay. Like, if I could tell you, I would. But it's as mystery to you guys as it is to us, the relay members or the relay pool members. So, yeah. Um, the only thing we can do is focus on our events. And then when we get there, if, if we're on it, like, you know, we're all going to be ready to roll. Right. The death is crazy. There's the death there, is I just crazy. Feel like there's no there's no wrong in it for real. Like wherever mm -hmm. you put anybody, it's just gonna be just chef's kiss. They're gonna look right. the and when it, coaches. <laughs> that's a good thing, is like whoever's on it, you know they're gonna like the relay's a relay. Like when it comes down to that, everyone always steps it up a notch and is ready to go when it comes time to that because that's the fun of it. Yeah, you're right. Now, Grant told me that he's on the relay pool. He doesn't even really know if he's on the relay pool, but he <laughs> said that he's ready to go, even in the 4x4. Four four. Hey. Jenna, do you have that same energy? Hey. If they need you. Whatever they need, um, I'm here, of course. Um, at the end of the day, when we're at the Olympics, <laughs> if we can represent Team USA, like, let's do it. But, shoot. Grant was a he ran crazy legs in Florida, so you know he can do anything. But you were in the four by four at Texas Relays back in like 2018. One time. And you split good. You split good. You were like it was the worst race of your yeah. life. It was the most pain you've ever felt. <laughs> it's that lactic acid. I don't know how people I don't know how you four hundred runners do it every single time. But um the good news is is the US has so much depth and so many options for the four by four that I will be the number one cheerleader for that race and <laughs> just sitting back, sitting back, chilling, watching them, cheering for them because I know that they will run something insane. They have, you can make two relays who would be competitive to win both. Like, that's the amount of depth that they have. Absolutely agree. They can make two relays and it would still be like gold and silver. Gold, yeah. silver, and maybe... You know they what? can make three relay we, teams. They really yeah. can. And now since I'm thinking about it, because they, they have could. the mixed relay too. Just, mm -hmm. right. just all of the above. It's exciting. The it's options exciting. are limitless. There's yeah. Now you can make a relay team mm -hmm. just off of 400 hurdlers. Like you could. <laughs> you could <laughs> literally. You could. There could be a relay team with the 100 meter girls too, though. There's, just, See, there's a lot. The options are limitless. <laughs> okay, Jenna. I'm just going to take your quote and I'm going to run with it. She said, if you guys need her for the 4x4, then she will be on it. And that's Oh, that's, there's, that there's, a lot of, there's a lot of other options that they will go with <laughs> first. But, um, hey, you never know. No. COVID. Okay. Jenna, when I saw you cross the line with the 21-8, I was screaming, how were you feeling? Like, were you expecting that? You were PRing every round, but were you expecting that? Let's be real. Honestly, yes. I think I've been expecting to see a time like that for, like, years now. Um, because at practices, I've been able to run times where it would correlate to at least sub-22. Um but I hadn't put it together in a race or right when I was ready to do that, I would be sidelined by an injury. So once I saw that time, it was kind of just like a relief. Like finally, um, finally I'm running times that I know I could run and I've been wanting to run for so long. Um, and obviously um, it was just exciting for me to see that and to be able to go to flow and be like, we did it. Um, and obviously he has things that he wants me to do better, but it's just exciting to know, like we're on the right path and things are finally starting to come together, um, at the right time when it counts. Things have been coming together for you and right. super excited for it. Super excited to see you in Tokyo in the 100, the 200 and the four by one honorable mention the four by four. 
Thank you so much for joining me. You're just putting Jenna. that out of the atmosphere. Take that out of the atmosphere. <laughs> I will not. But thank you for joining me, Jenna, for another episode of thank On you. the Run. Flowtrack.org slash On the Run. Instagram, Twitter, my Instagram, all that good jazz. Your host, Serenity Douglas. <laughs>